So uh, one important element which I usually bring part of my discussion is your uh, difference between your security and privacy, right? So when I when I speak about three terms actually, there is an information security, there is a data privacy and data protection, right? In India, mother, it's 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 slightly different. Most of the information security senior people who have joined, if you ask them, it's it's uh, uh, very different back in India. Most of the CISOs have taken up the uh, or responsibilities of data privacy here. Uh, that's uh, if that's good or bad. I uh, that's something the law has kept it right now very open. But the reason why it's under uh, legal in US because uh, US goes long way back in terms of data privacy obligation. The attorneys used to rule those requirements for a very long time, lawsuits and everything, right? So. Uh, even after it become so technology dependent, uh, it, 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 it it's ideally should have moved into a separate segment, but it's not happening yet. Uh, uh, privacy is more to uh, have a touch point on confidentiality and integrity. Uh, availability, of course, but yeah, that, that, that's also there. In generally, the CIA is also a common uh, uh, denominator for privacy as well. When we go to the data breach chapter, I will explain you the nuances of uh, what amounts to a breach and which which principles actually uh, sort of differ, right? So yes, so this is in terms of this. But I, I just want to ask you fundamentally the difference of information security and privacy. Let me let me add my perspective there. See, information security is mostly a, a regulatory requirement and uh, it's it's more of an organization uh, practices where we uh, go for an internal requirement or we draft our own uh, set of uh, obligations plus we may follow some regulatory requirements as well, some standards as well, right? But privacy is originating from the law and uh, uh, often people confuse in terms of privacy being a subset of security and uh, a, a privacy function should be uh, the reporting lines, uh, I'm, I'm speaking in general, like uh, privacy should be reporting to the CISO, right? But there are different perspectives from different laws, right? Uh, this is important for us to understand as a DPO. Uh, laws like GDPR, they specifically outline that a DPO function cannot or a DPO role cannot be uh, uh, having a conflict of interest. So what does this conflict of interest means? If you already holding a function where you get to decide the purpose or the ways and means of processing personal data, then you cannot hold the DPO uh, function within the organization. So as simple as that, you should be completely away from any operational activity, right? So uh, a DPO cannot be part of your marketing function, cannot be part of your finance, cannot be part of any any function where personal data and the decisions have been taken. In short, even CISO has a certain degree of conflict of interest as per GDPR, because at, uh, as a CISO as well, uh, you might be taking some crucial decisions, right? Uh, part of your uh, uh, processing as well as sometimes even to personal data protection. Right. So again, it depends like how CISO has been structured within an organization. That's again uh, a different take. Now, uh, the reason is in, in GDPR, it's a legally mandated role. The clearly the definitions have been called out. The, the conflict of interest has been called out. The, 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 the criteria of who qualifies for a DPO has been called out, although kept at a very high level. But uh, this has been very clearly mentioned. What is the role's responsibility? Uh, what is the qualification criteria? Who needs to appoint a DPO, right? But in other laws, it, it could be very different, right? Uh, for example, in Brazil, uh, uh, every organization have to appoint a DPO, right? In Indian law, they have called out that the significant data fiduciary have to appoint a DPO. Another organization may not need one. But uh, I strongly believe you may call them as DPO or you may call them as data privacy manager, but it is very important to have a single point of contact who is responsible for managing the data privacy of an organization, right? So in, 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 in my perspective, security is one of the very important enabler for privacy, but security and privacy are two distinct uh, uh, functions. And uh, they have a lot of common objective, but 
uh, they are definitely different in terms of origin and the way it has to be handled as well right so uh, data protection is uh, some amalgamation of your security and privacy together because it's at a layer of managing the data of a organization so the data contains many components it could be organization data it also includes your personal data right so that's the reason if you see laws like gdpr it is written at a general data protection law right so data protection is slightly different from your focus of privacy or although privacy is uh, privacy and its objective is going to be uh, taken care but it's more at a data protection layer where you have to combine the objectives of security and privacy part of it to achieve your data protection right so that's where the nuances come up in terms of how do you fulfill your privacy obligation that comes out from the law and how do you actually uh, engage the security functions to enable those objectives to be met and together is what you will be fulfilling a data protection function right so uh, uh, that's the reason we call it as a data protection officer so uh, we don't call them as a data privacy officer so in, in terms of your personal data protection is going to be the key objective not just the rights but protecting the data from collection to disposal in the entire life cycle see the the in organization security objectives are always once the data comes into the organization the 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 objective is to protect the data with the suitable measures you have to classify the data and appropriately protect them as per the value to the organization right whereas data privacy if you if you remember the previous slide which i had it's uh, more in terms of uh, uh, why we are collecting this data right so we we would like to know what data and what data is important and why it is being collected so we never ask this question part of information security in terms of why we collect this data isn't it uh, so that's the fundamental difference where data privacy is going to ask you those questions in terms of is this data really required for the organization uh, it's going to be asking the tough question in certain in terms of how much data is required uh, what relevant categories of data to be collected in terms of how long we are going to keep it all these questions are going to be coming up from the data privacy part right so security is going to how we are going to protect this data in the entire uh, gamut of your pro, uh, processing that's the core relation between these two uh, functions or disciplines all right thanks amit so just to outline on focus goal scope and components and what are the different frameworks uh, that sort of supports these two functions so uh, we discussed um, uh, in terms of focus and goals right so the scope here is in terms of uh, how do you manage the life cycle permissions and fulfill the access and uh, data security of course your cia uh, in terms of different controls right and uh, the framework part is again important uh, in terms of data privacy you have laws you have sectoral laws like hipaa pci dss you have copa in us and uh, then we have 27701 which is your pims which is your privacy information management system which is an extension of 27 uh, 27001 so you will see a greater adoption of 27701 going forward uh, uh, from many organization who want to showcase their uh, uh, baseline adherence to the data privacy uh, obligation right so that's another area uh, i would recommend all of you to pick it up uh, uh, into your uh, skill set depends uh, what level what role you play in your organization but if you are a consultant i would uh, uh, definitely recommend 27701 is something which which you need to be aware of which is going to call out your that's the only auditable certification that exists see uh, the the advantage is that you are going to definitely cover your minimum baseline right iso was written as a, uh, a regulation agnostic uh, standard or uh, that's not catered to one specific law but they have covered it in fact it's it's law, sort of covering the gamut of gdpr whenever you cover gdpr in the world 80% of the data privacy laws around the world are covered correct so it calls out your specific obligation as a controller processor and it it sort of it's an extension your 27001 and even 27001 as now uh, in the amended version you have seen privacy comes as a specific domain out of the four right now uh, that makes it like everyone is going to focus on data privacy which is which is like 
uh, no more an option it's it's going to be a, a mandatory uh, obligation which everyone has to take up in fact i would say any risk professional uh, who is managing organizational security you cannot neglect data privacy as a subject going forward it's going to be one of your kpi which has going to be defined that you need to be aware of how to manage your personal data for an organization so that's again a very very important area that you need to be aware of